Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Frog tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to use the Shape tool or the Draw Shape tab. Now, the Shape tool allows us to create custom defined shapes that we can use within Dungeon Frog as props once we've created them. At the moment, once you've created a shape, you can't edit it. So this takes some getting used to. We have a lot of options which we've seen before, but let's jump straight into it. I've created a very basic layout here, and so I'm going to create a prop. I want to have a stage, for example, within this room, a nice wooden stage for my performers to stand on, if this was, say, a tavern or a theatre. So once again, to define the texture, I'm going to uh, select left click the uh, shape texture tab, and I will go and find the texture that I feel will work the best. I'm gonna minimize that. I think we could probably go with some kind of worked wood. So it's a wooden stage. Let's choose decorated. Once again, I have all of my controls over the scaling and the size. I see it's at 400% from a map I was doing earlier. I'm gonna decrease that down to 100%. We've got all of our colorization options as per normal with Dungeon Fog. Now I'm then going to create my shape. I'm going to deselect the texture selector. So I've got my shape. You'll notice that I've got that red dot, the same as when you are creating a room. This allows us to get some interesting measurements, which can be useful. So I'm going to left click once, left click again. Again, notice it's giving us the dimensions very much like a room creation for this uh, particular tool. And there you go. We've now created this space. So if I go back to my selection option, the shape is now within the room. So if I select the room, you can see the usual vertex points and wall segments coming up. But then if I left click again on the stage, you will see that it is, as a matter of fact, a separate prop. Now I can move this around as I like. As with standard props, if I move it outside of the room, it will be outside of the room. Wherever that cursor is, that's where the prop is going to be based. So if I left click here, it will now appear inside the room. So just remember that particular quirk of how the props are located within Dungeon Fog, because now that you have created your shape, it is now effectively a prop. I can't control the shape of it. I can't go in and edit the shape. I can now only work with the features and functions that I have available to me. Now, some of these features are only available once you have created the prop itself. So if I wanted to make a large table, for example, I could do that. I can still, with the prop selected, I can still go to my textures and change the textures. I can change the size of the check textures, the rotation. Let's change that to 90. So it's running the length of the stage. That looks a little bit better, I think. So we have our option of above the walls. As with normal props, this would place it above the wall of the particular structure. So if I did that, I've now selected it, select the prop, move the prop, and now the prop is going to sit over the walls. This could be useful if we wanted a ramp or if we wanted to put a board over something, we could certainly do that. I'm going to deselect that. We could give it an outline. Now the outline is very subtle, but it now has this hard black outline. This can be useful if we then add an outer shadow because now it starts to look exactly like the walls and things that we've been doing before, or it starts to look like one of the props that you can get within Dungeon Fog that have a black outline and then a drop shadow. So we can combine these effects together. If we deselect the outer shadow and we select the inner shadow, it will now look like the prop is incised into the floor of this particular room. That's quite a powerful effect. We might want to say, well, there's a sunken wooden level, and then we would put some stairs for the characters to be able to go down the stairs into the space or to engage it in a different way. So you can play around with different combinations as well, activating or deactivating these as you so choose. I'm going to leave it as an inner shadow. We again have our needs key, which will place a red circular dot in the middle of the prop for the GM's eyes only to indicate that whatever this stage is, to access it needs a key or alternatively it's trapped again the prop is indicated as red as per the standard dungeon fog codes for indicating a trapped object but the players won't see that if you're using the virtual viewer within dungeon fog itself Finally, we have the ability to control the opacity of the prop. We can drop it to whatever value we so choose. This can be useful if you are using this to simulate water, a watery pool, for example. You might want to use the shape tool to create a river or to create a semblance of a pool. You can stack props on top of each other. So if I left click back, and now uh, let's say uh, we create another prop, we're going to use the water texture. 
that's just over here and let's create this water texture and then we'll draw over this prop now i've misaligned the prop but that's okay because i know that the prop is basically i think it's uh, possibly this shape here again i can't edit that so i would have to have actually looked at that but if i overlay the two and then i change the transparency of this one it looks like water is now in a pool and that's how you would use that effect i don't need to apply i don't think an outline to this water texture or an inner shadow i might if i want to reinforce the idea i'm not sure if that looks better or worse but that's how you can then overlay props to create some very interesting effects some very dynamic effects as well you can give your shape a name of course as with every prop within dungeon fog you can select it and give it a name if not it defaults to the texture that you have applied to it so that is it that is the shape tool in dungeon fog